Hi, I'm Sean Foster, and I'm at the Thingery in the basement of University Hall here at Louisiana Tech. Here I'll be showing you how to operate and maintain the MakerBot Replicator 2 desktop 3D printer. So first, we have to turn it on. The switch is here in the back, and you can reach around the back and you can feel it. Just flip it the opposite direction, and it should turn right on. Here, it will upload the firmware and obviously give you a wonderful noise. All right, so we have several presets to choose from, as you can see here. The MakerBot comes with a preloaded SD card with .object files on it. So if you wanted to build something from the SD card, you can go to the first menu. We're not going to start with that. We're going to start with getting your MakerBot set up. So before every print, you want to make sure that your bed is level and also that you have filament loaded into it. So we're going to go into Utilities, and we're going to go to Change Filament, because you obviously need filament loaded. So we're going to go to Change Filament. I already have filament loaded in here. It's clear PLA. By the way, PLA is the only thing that the MakerBot Replicator 2 will print in. So we're going to click Unload, since I already have it loaded. So what it's going to do is it's going to heat the extruder, and it's going to show on the display screen, please wait while I heat my extruder. So, our extruder is heated, and it made a small noise whenever it finished heating, so you know. And here on the screen it says, I'm ready, pull off the guide tube and gently pull the filament. So we're going to pull out of the guide tube. The filament comes out really gross and sometimes marred. You'll have to cut that off to reload it. So, now that we have our filament out, I'm going to show you how to load it from scratch. So we're going to turn. We're going to tell the MakerBot to stop heating, and it says, when my filament is released, press M to exit. So we're going to hit M to exit. Now we're going to go to the back of the MakerBot, and we're going to pretend like this spool was never here. So if this is the first time you've ever loaded it, this is where you'll start from scratch. So you take your spool your, of your PLA filament, you put it on the spool holder, and then you run it up through this straw. So now... We load this in there, and we continue to push it until it comes out of the top of the straw. Once it exits exit the other side, we'll tell it to do the load command. So we have it here, and you want to make sure that when you're loading it into the extruder that you cut off any of this wiry bits. You want it to be a nice, flat, flush cut. So I'm going to procure a pair of cutting devices and cut this so I can load it in there. All right, so I have my handy dandy wire strippers. You can use scissors or whatever sharp cutting utensils you have. So here, we're gonna take our, our filament and we're just gonna make a nice clean cut where there's no more wiry extruded mess. So we're gonna snip it and set that down to the side. Now we have a nice flat cut, and we're going to go into the MakerWare, or the MakerBot, and go and say, load filament. So we tell it to load, and it says, I'm ready. Pull the guide tube off and push the, the filament through. You'll hear the stepper motor whining, and then all you do is you take your filament and you just push. You continue to push until filament is extruded out of the other end. It may take a second, especially if this is your first time loading your filament. So now on the bottom, we see we have filament coming through just fine. So now we push the guide straw or the guide tube back into the top firmly, and then we tell it to stop by pressing the end. And that is how you load and unload. So now we hit the back button, and we're also going to level our build plate. Our build plate is extremely important for making fine prints. It will have to be leveled every 50 hours or so, and if you notice any of your parts start coming out funny, it's probably your build plate. So we hit level build plate. So our bed moves into position, and on our, on our display, it'll tell us exactly the directions that we need to do. In your MakerBot, it comes with this card. It requires the use of this card to level the plate. So it says tighten, tighten each knob under three knobs under the build platform about four turns. So we're going to tighten by rotating in the counterclockwise direction four turns. One, two, three, four. 
two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then the rear one, one, two, three, four. And then we hit the M. It says it's going to adjust the height at each point, loosen the specified knob until the nozzle almost touches the build plate. The nozzle is at the right height when a thin piece of paper, aka your MakerBot Industries card, will slide underneath the, uh, the build nozzle with some friction. So it's going to move into position in which I'm going to take this MakerBot card and try to slide it underneath the nozzle. There is not very much resistance. It slides pretty freely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this up a little bit with one hand and try to run the card under it with the other. Now to raise the platform, you'll turn your screw clockwise, just only a couple of turns. So you'll notice whenever the card won't go under the nozzle that you need to rotate it back about a quarter of a turn and then it will slide, slide under with a little bit of friction. So now we hit the M, and it's going to move to the next place. Now we do the same thing for this side. We take our card, and we run it through the bottom. This one is way off, so we're going to need a couple turns clockwise, just to get it back in spec. There we go. It's starting to slide with a little bit of friction. After you finish leveling your build plate, as per the instructions on the screen, it will be ready to print. So now, there are two ways to print. You can either print with the MakerWare or you can print from SD. I'm going to show you how to print from an SD card. So you hit the back button again from after completing the build plate and you go up all the way up to build from SD. Earlier I told you that there are some preloaded softwares on here that you can choose from. We're going to choose the chain links and then we hit the M button. It will heat the extruder and start your print. If you want to put something on your SD card to print, it has to be a dot object file for it to print. So now we step back and let it do its thing. Associated with the MakerBot is a website called Thingiverse. Thingiverse has many things that, are, that have already been created in CAD that you can download and open with MakerWare. In a later tutorial, we will show you how to make your own things to be 3D printed on the MakerBot. So here we have our chains which are being printed now on the MakerBot and we're going to download them. So click download this thing and normally you want to download an STL file, a .object file, or a .thing file. MakerWare will read all of these. So we're going to get just the straight chain five links and click on that. It will download and then you will open MakerWare. Then in MakerWare we will go to file open and straight chain links. We will open that in MakerWare. It will ask you to put the object on the platform. Is the object on the platform and do you want to put it there? We want to click move to platform. This will automatically level it and center it on the build platform which is extremely important. Here we have different view commands. If you hold the mouse click button you can rotate the screen. You can go up and down. If you hover over the look icon, you'll see that the small triangle pops up. If you click on that triangle, it will do many other preset functions that you can do. Here we will show the top, the side, or the front. Also with the object, you can click move. So you have to click an object in order for it to be selected to be moved. So we're going to click on the chains, it's highlighted when you hover over it, and then you click to select it. So now we're going to move it with using the arrow, and then you can position everything in millimeters. Everything that has to do with the MakerBot is in millimeters by default. You can change that to inches in your CAD file and also in the scale file. So here we want to move it in the X direction, only several millimeters. As you can see it is shifting to the right, and then you can shift it back to the left by decrement. You can shift it forward towards you and away from you using the Y and up and down in the Z direction. I do not recommend using the Z direction as it may leave your part off the build platform which will make your print fail. So I'm going to click reset position 
and it will put it in default and center it. Now we can turn our object by clicking turn and then hitting the arrow button. You don't always have to hit the arrow button, it just shows you default and custom options. You can also do it by using your mouse. And it will show you the offset right here, it's 140 degrees about, and other different options. So you can also go to scale to make it larger or smaller if need be. You can also set custom sizes by hovering over the arrow and then telling it to be bigger in one direction versus the other. There is also a setting here for uniform scaling that makes sure that the X, Y, and the Z all move in correlation to one another. So now that we have our object exactly positioned into the scale that we want it, we now click Make. It says, I want to make it now, or you can export it as a .stl thing or object file. And you want to make it with the Replicator 2. Your material is grayed out being default PLA as the Replicator cannot print with anything else. You have different resolutions, low, standard, and high. Low goes really fast, but the print layers are obvious whenever you print it out. Standard's a little bit faster, and high makes it print in high quality with high strength. There's a raft, which will allow it to print a base around your object to help it stick. PLA doesn't have any problem sticking to these print beds, so unless you have an extremely small part, I wouldn't suggest using a raft. If you have overhangs that are larger than 45 degrees, I would suggest clicking the support. And it will print supports that will allow it to print things that are over 45 degrees of an angle. So now, we have different profiles for slicing, low, standard, and high. By default, we'll click low. And then it will also slice it and tell us the infill. The infill is for larger parts. If you have a large part, you don't want it to print every layer in solid. So what you will do is you will click a 10% to 50% infill, which will mean that it will skip about 50% of the inside volume with air instead of filament. Your shells will also print around your object, and it says right here, if you hover over each of the options, it will show you a highlight of what it does. Your shells will also print around your object, and it says right here, if you hover over each of the options, it will show you a highlight of what it does. It says the thickness of model walls. So you may want your walls to be a little bit thicker on some objects than others. So you will increase that here. Layer height is automatically selected to be 0.3 millimeters. That is the resolution of the print in the Z direction. We would click make it if we wanted the 3D printer to start making it. As you can see, our MakerBot just finished printing our new set of chains. It also gave us an audio alarm to let it know that it's done. And on the screen, it shows us our exact build time. So here, we're going to take our object off the plate. Larger objects may be more difficult to take off because of the adhesion. Sometimes you have to use a craft spatula or even an X-Acto knife, which I do not recommend because it tears up the painter's tape on your platform. But as you can see, all the chains are connected and they can move independently of one another. So after you tell your MakerBot to print an object, safety is definitely a concern. The extruder heats up to 230 degrees centigrade, which is extremely hot and you, do, you never want to leave this unattended during any of your prints. So, if you see any problems that arise, be sure to contact somebody who can take care of it, and always, always remember that if, if all else fails, turn the machine off.